This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Walls Property Palette. So we've been dancing around this subject for a little while. We've been actually using the Properties Palette a little bit in looking at the Type Selector and in other things, but now we're going to look at it as it applies to walls. And of course, we're working towards making this sketch, so that's our goal for now. So how does this Properties Palette work, and what is it exactly? Let's click on the Wall Tool. That's under the Home tab in the ribbon. Now you'll notice that the Properties Palette has immediately changed. As soon as I picked on that, you'll notice the Type Selector. We've talked about that. But you'll also notice down under here, there's listings of all the properties of the wall which we are about to make. And you'll notice that a lot of these are duplicated right up here in the options bar. So for instance, the location line, we can select it right there. That's the same as selecting it here. We can pick the base. So that's where are we starting to draw this wall? Is it on the level that we are working on? So this is top of floor one. That's where it starts. That makes sense. But do we want to offset it from that floor? Maybe we want a curb, and maybe we want it to be for some reason offset from that floor. We can do that. Top constraint, that's this right here. That's the height. So this is just another word, top constraint for the height. Now, if I pick the top constraint, I can say unconnected. And that's just giving it a height. That's the same thing as we just saw in the options bar. There are things which are grayed out, which you can't change until you've actually drawn the wall. So let's do that. I'm going to draw that wall just as it is. And I'm just going to draw a sample right here and hit Escape. Now I'll hit Escape twice. The Properties palette will go back to its normal state, which is the properties of the view. But if I were to click on that wall, a lot of the things that we picked in the beginning as we were drawing the wall are available to be changed. So we can pick the location line, reset that. We can pick the base constraint, the base offset. These are things we could change yet again. It also gives us more information, for instance, the length of the wall, the area of the wall, the volume. And we can continue down through the wall. We can put comments into the wall and specify a mark or a number for that particular wall. And we also have this phasing, and we talked about that in setting up the project, that you may want to avoid the new construction phase because as you can see here, everything you draw will appear on that phase by default. Now, in the case of our project, we decided, let's just go with that for now. And at a later date, when we do some more training, we'll get into phasing more in depth. So that's the properties palette as it applies to walls. Let's just add something to this. I'm going to just hit Escape twice to get out of the wall command, or to get off of that wall that we selected. Now I'm going to select a wall that little sample wall that I made, I'm going to select that and then hit delete. So let's create an interior style wall. And if we just look at our sketch, you'll notice that we have a thicker exterior wall and then thinner interior walls. And we're going to be making up a style just for the interior. We already did one for the exterior wall. So let's flip back over to Revit. So I'm going to click on the wall tool again. And you'll notice in the properties palette that we have EW1. That's the default that I have anyway. And what we can do is make yet another one. So I'm going to go to Edit Type, Duplicate, and I'm going to call this one IP1. And what's that stand for? Well, it stands for Interior Partition 1. And that's just going to be an interior wall. We could call it IW1 if that's something we wanted to do. Now, we're not done yet. Let's go into the structure. Let's hit Edit. And let's change that. Now, typically, wood stud walls are three and a half inches or so and then there's some drywall on either side and we could give it a sort of a nominal dimension of four and a half inches and that would account for three and a half plus a half inch of drywall on either side so let's go with that so four and then we can put in 0.5 and that'll be 4.5 inches or four and a half we could also type in four space and then one slash two inch and that'll be four and a half inches so let's say OK to that, OK to that, and let's draw just maybe a few of those interior walls. So where are these starting? Well, they're going to be starting, the base constraint is top of floor one, good. 
how high. Let's put those up to the top of roof plate. Now let's refer back to our sketch. These right here are openings, so we don't want to draw walls that are stopped there. We actually want to draw one wall that goes all the way across, and the 10 foot mark is on that side of the wall, so we'll have to take note of that. So we've picked our IP1, and let's pick Finish Face Interior as our location line, and we'll click on the far right. We're still drawing clockwise. You can see that if I were to go around like that, that's clockwise. So I'm going from, in this case, right to left. And I can click from there to there. And then I hit escape once. And then that will take my, sort of like taking my pencil off the page once. I could continue to draw the walls, but I'm not right out of the wall command. I could hit escape again, and then that would take me right out of the wall command. One last thing about the properties palette that we need to think about, and that is what if it gets moved? How do you move it? How do you get it back if it gets closed? Well, if I just click on it and drag it with my left mouse button, I'm just holding that mouse button down. If I let go, now it's just dragged onto the screen. I could drag it to the far right. Some people prefer that setup, and then they can see more properties. Incidentally, they can also see more in the project browser. They can also, or you can also, drag that to another screen. So you could have a secondary screen. When it's dragged down to the corner, it's called docked. So if you lose any of these features, Project Browser, Properties, Box, how do you get them back? So if I hit the X, oh no, now what do I do? Well, a couple ways to do this. Number one way, go to View, go to the User Interface button, and click on that. Now notice here you have Properties. Let's turn that on. All right, now it appears right back up, and we've got it. The other way to approach this is I could right-click on an object, and then go down to Properties, and that'll bring it right back up again. So once that's up, I can just drag it over to the side, and it's as it was. But again, if you want to drag them off into another screen and have more real estate for your model, by all means, that can work.